Hello and welcome. Today we'll be discussing interest rates, and more specifically, the difference between nominal and real rates of interest. Generally speaking, an interest rate is the cost that a borrower pays for the privilege to borrow money from a creditor. It is usually expressed as a percentage of the total amount of the loan, and can basically be thought of as a rental charge on the borrowed capital. But there are two common ways of actually measuring the cost of borrowing money. The first is known as the nominal interest rate. The nominal interest rate is simply the stated interest rate of a bond, and it does not account for inflation. For example, if a bond has a coupon or interest rate of 5%, then its nominal interest rate is also 5%. And if a bond has a coupon or interest rate of 8%, then its nominal interest rate is 8%, and so forth. However, the inflation rate, that is, the rate at which the general level of prices for goods and services increases over time, can significantly influence the cost of borrowing money. Unfortunately, the nominal interest rate fails to account for these fluctuations in the inflation rate, and as a result provides an incomplete picture of the cost of borrowing money. On the other hand, the second measure of interest rates, the real rate of interest, provides a more complete picture of the cost of borrowing money by accounting for the effects of inflation on loans. The real interest rate reflects the true cost of funds to the borrower and the true yield to the lender, and is calculated by subtracting the inflation rate, actual or expected, from the nominal interest rate, an equation known as the Fisher equation. Generally, high inflation is harmful to creditors because they are effectively lending more valuable money and receiving back less valuable money at maturity. On the other hand, high inflation is beneficial to borrowers because while they have to pay back the face value of the loan at maturity, they are effectively paying back less than that because of the devaluation of the currency. The longer the term of a loan, the more significant the potential effects of inflation. The benefit of the real interest rate is that by incorporating inflation in your calculations, you can assess whether in accepting a particular yield, you're actually gaining or losing purchasing power over time. So, in order to avoid the erosion of purchasing power through inflation, investors usually consider the real interest rate rather than the nominal rate. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to give us a call or visit our website.